In a world with entirely too many shows about cars, this is another pointless automotive podcast. What's up, bro? What's happening, man? A huge mosquito just like, (laughs) as I said, that flew like across my face and like bounced off the little webcam here. For those watching at home, (laughs) got an up close and personal uh, experience with a a It's like a nature trail cam right now. So it's like a it's like a competition between that mosquito and that black widow to see who can get you first. Exactly. Yeah, (laughs) pretty sure. Exactly. Maybe maybe this will slowly turn into naked and afraid and like the bugs and critters will get get me. Um, How are you, Chadwick? Good, man. How you how you been? How you oh been? boy, how I been? Uh, I've been insanely busy um, in 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 all kinds of mm. various different ways. Um, the kid, the kid, the kid lost an organ, so you know he 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 had to get his appendix yoinked out. So that ate up some time. And I've been busy. I've been busy with the new gig, doing some stuff with the the folks at Cars and Bids. And so I have been I've been very busy. How about yourself? I see I see there's Preach. an interesting thing in the background back there. Yeah, an Suzu Trooper. Yeah, with a Uniroyal Laredo spare tire, I can see. <laughs> From like 1992 on the back. It's it's like literally pliable with your fingertips. It's so nice. it's decorative. So it's a decorative spare. Oh, man. Yeah, it's it's image. It's all about image with these trucks. Uh, That's right. But yeah, I hear you preaching to the choir on the busy front. Uh, my kid still has all his organs, but at least your guy got rid of an organ he can do without. That's I think true. That's a good choice organ to get probably, rid of. Probably the most choice organ to lose right i think so like gallbladder is right there too we don't use that one as much yeah i guess one of the duplicate ones you know Kidney. i suppose if you have like a third testicle and you were to lose it like that I mean, <laughs> would that be an upgrade maybe because well, then you'd be like back to being a normie you know here's like, the thing there's a line when you're talking about your kid and uh testicles i didn't want to like <laughs> fair <laughs> fair this is true yeah <laughs> is foreskin technically an organ i don't oh think god it. it depends how much of it you got that's true. Yeah, if it <laughs> if it if it if it doubles as a sleeping bag, I suppose it's like a rattlesnake's shed skin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yours doesn't. Um, and speaking of parts, <laughs> to try to try and craft a segue loose segue. Out, of, out of this uh, a loose skin loose segue, mm. um, craft that into uh, parts and and parts from a bin. And, Ooh, and parts that one might make cars out of specifically what uh what people like to call the parts bin special oh yeah um good one and yeah i wanted to talk about this because there's a lot i I think there's a lot of cars some of which i've owned some of which i haven't um where people you know they'll they'll clutch their pearls and oh you know that car oh it's just it was just made of you know it's a parts bin special they just got a bunch off the part shelf and they threw it together and they try to make themselves a new a new product um and, and and talk about that as being a negative and 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 being to the detriment of the end product, um, and I think that's uh, tomfoolery. It's poppycock. Mm-hmm. It's, it's 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 nonsense because I th- if if you kind of drill down and you look at it, some of my favorite, some of your favorite, some of the automotive world's absolute favorite cars are effectively parts been specials, whether people want to realize it or not. Right. Um, and let's face it, I mean, making, especially now, uh, more than ever, I think making purely bespoke parts for, for mm-hmm. cars is is going, has kind of gone the way of the Dodo. And, and yeah, there's some of it, but for the stuff that, that we tr- play with and traffic in, which are the not extremely expensive um, cars of the automotive sporting world, um, it's going to be parts, it's parts bin specials all the way down. Oh yeah. And so I, I wanted to take a second and, and defend the parts bin special Ooh. because um they're cool and and I think it's all much to do about nothing as far yeah. as people complaining about parts bins cars. And we are champions of the underserved uh crappier shit boxes out there. So I think this is this does fall upon our shoulders to carry this burden. Um and before we dive into like specifics or any any other thing, I want to yeah. start off with a little icebreaker, Frank, about oh boy, uh parts bin special. So okay. What's your favorite? Break my ice, baby. Yes. Uh, what's <laughs> basic instinct came to mind? But uh, oh, no. what's, what's your favorite shared part between a cheaper car and a much more expensive, 
luxurious car, a specific part. Like a specific part like yeah. on a specific car? Yeah, one of your favorites, if you've got one. If you don't, no pressure. Um, I mean, with expensive, I mean, it, you got to go the, the one that, well, there's a couple of ways you can do it. There's mm. uh, Italy is very good at it. And so you can go with the, with the headlight of a car that you own that is on a, 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 a early 2000s <laughs> exotic the uh, the end run Diablo with the uh, the Nissan head the Nissan C thirty two's three hundred ZX tail uh, headlights right I personally am a fan of the Aston Martin DB seven European market another uh, car I own BB three tail lights oh tail lights so the 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 uh, the um the the Aston Martin DB seven that's right the tail lights are Mazda three two three like European market Mazda three two three tail lights so. That's not the Mazda I own, the Miata. Yes. In- interior door, door handles. Your door handles. Exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Lovely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I mean, there's a lot of it. We could sit here and, and rattle off and, and, and whether it's the high end car that has, you know, the low end, like, what is it? Is it the F40 taillights or like shared with like a municipal bus taillights yeah, or something? Like a garbage truck or something. Yeah. yeah. It's um, wild. Yeah, and there's a lot of that, and and you know, in a lot of ways, it makes sense. And would you but ever whole cars that wouldn't exist with, without parts been sharing? Would you ever at a car meet go up to a Diablo and pull that little carbon fiber strip off to show the Nissan? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, it's like Scooby Doo. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Row, row. But the um, I mean, there's all kinds of there's all, like how many cool products are are parts bin cars, and I don't mean just like one or two things like. You know, right? Like, like Toyota using their turn signal stocks across their entire product range. Like, that, okay, everybody like does that. Yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know. Do you have a favorite parts bin special? So car? yeah. Do you have a I, few? I what picked your, a what few. Are your thoughts I, on the subject. Yeah, I I approached this by picking a few that are well known parts car uh, parts bin special cars, but yes. they also are good cars in their own rights. And yeah. the first one I want to call attention to is probably one of my favorite modern-ish yeah it's modern bmws the 1m which i i thought yeah. was super cool uh because it, it's not as soft as the m2 uh yeah. definitely has become now but the 1m was cool because basically they took the one series you had the 128 the 135 135i yep. was pretty close because twin turbo engine but they yes. took all the good suspension stuff out of the m3 which was a fantastic car at the time and I mean, that was kind of cool in itself, but that's a huge parts bin dipping operation, right? You're pulling all the suspension off your other car. Uh, what else did it have? It had a whole bunch of crazy stuff. I can't remember, but it really set the precedent for like all the guys with like 335s and 135s and all those cars mm-hmm. taking M3 components and putting on those cars because it's it literally all just switches over. I just, I just love the size of those cars. I, I, I like I, how I think it looks. they're just sized right. Yeah, they look good. I know at the Looks time so and good. even still people like they look kind of like people don't like the proportions because the greenhouse is a little upright and it's a little, but I like that. I think it looks, I, like it I think they look very good. People were like, Oh, it's this weird jelly bean looking thing. And the two series after it looks better and, and fair. I prefer the one series look though. I think it, I like that kind mm-hmm. of slightly awkward, more upright greenhouse. I think it's more, it, it harkens back to some of the earlier stuff with the, the E30s and the E21s. A hundred percent. A lot like an E46 too. Uh, just just the right proportions. But that orange it came in was brilliant too. Uh, but I, I really like those. I thought the M2's rear end was a little too plain as a follow-up act to the 1M. Sure. But uh, those 1M values, holy crap, dude. They just, they went down yeah, a they, little bit at first and then they just held it they, like 65. They bounce up and they're just there for eternity. Forever, um, yeah. Yeah, they might adjust with inflation, but like that's that's forever going to be just cemented at that. But talk about a parts bin special. Up. They literally took a 1 Series, put M3 components on it. Boom, 1M, mm-hmm. sent mm-hmm. it out the door. Well, Fantastic I mean, even, car. Even go back, even go back to the, the OG M Series cars. Not so much, I mean, the M3 is, is kind of pretty bespoke. So that's not a good yeah. example, but stuff like the the E twenty four six series M six and E twenty eight the M five they, they they basically got the motor out of the M one yep. the their their touring car masterpiece. There are the amount of insects in here <laughs> in my business today is extreme. Um, Safari, <laughs> just like that M one motor 
was all up in the business of the M6, correct? The M5, and so you know, it, it's probably a little, little blasphemy to try and call that a parts bin special. Yeah, but it kind of was like they got like, hey, what else can we put this motor in? Let's put it in these sedans. Let's create a, a coupe and a sedan, um, and make something that's pretty special. Those cars, those cars are really cool. I like those cars a lot. I would, I think, I'd rather, um, hot take. I think I'd rather have a, a an M. E24, E28, M6, or M5 over uh, an E30, M3. And I think that's probably, I'm probably in the minority there. The E28, yeah, the E28 is really nice. That M5. Yeah, those are cool. I do like that car. But I mean, what's the, what are the, what's the value on one of those compared to an M5? It's, it's 50% what? less? It's hard. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's way less, but man, they're, they're definitely holding some value now though too. Yeah. Yeah. Those so, are cool. Like everything. Um, <laughs> and, and speaking speaking of German stuff, um, what's probably everyone's favorite hot hatch and arguably the original hot hatch? My God, I thought you were going to reference a certain German car that's doing a wheelie behind you right now. Because that's oh, kind no, of, that's no. kind we'll, of a we'll big... Get to, we'll get to that one later. That's a big one. Uh, so hot hatch, that's... Did you say German? German. The German. The hot hatch. Well, there's a few that come to mind, but... So a whole see. bunch of the, a whole bunch of the components of that car are in that one do, on Jack stands behind me. <laughs> it's a Volkswagen product, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the GTI. The GTI, the original. The GTI, yeah. And, you know the Mark One, and I mean really every GTI. But True. let's just start there with the Mark the Mark One. You know the everyone everyone's darling. Um, that was absolutely a parts bin car. Um, as was the Sirocco. I mean really every interesting. Uh, Volkswagen has always been a parts bin car. A Corrado, right. a Corrado has like I want to say it's got like Jetta rear suspension and Passat front suspension and the the the, the VR6 and it, it it's through and through a parts bin car. Um, right, right. They were all cool. named after they were all after wind, right? Everything was named after a wind. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Golf, should we do karate. I feel like we could, should we do an episode only on wind cars? <laughs> <laughs> you got all cars it. named after the, the all the Maseratis, right? Yeah, like the Mistrial. And... Well, the cloud cars too, Stratus, Cirrus. Yeah, actually only only um only af as, uh atmospheric phenomena. Plymouth episode. Breeze. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Plymouth Breeze and we can, we can talk about uh the cyclone and the typhoon. Oh um, shit. Anything that came equipped with a monsoon uh, stereo system, perhaps, could be. Uh, <laughs> you, in you guys, mix. you guys thought you signed up for an episode. This is just a brainstorming session. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Welcome to our our madness. Um, <laughs> but th just the GTI, like the people, you know, there's lots of oh, it's just a parts bin car, and oh, you know that people talking about, you know, some of the the lesser Aston Martin stuff, like so let's say the DB7. Oh, you know, it's got a lot of parts from the. You know Jaguar parts and and Ford parts and Mazda parts and and this and that and it's just like sure does. Yeah, that's the original GTI is like the poster child of a home run of a car and it's I mean it defined a genre effectively. Oh but, yeah, and, and it was a parts bin car and kind of every hot if you think about it almost every single hot hatch is a parts bin car. All of them. Yeah. Every every hot hatch to, from the beginning and end of time. Is is a a, a parts bin a parts bin special? Even weird stuff like, like a Mazda 323 GTX, which basically has like kind of a Miata motor with a turbo slapped on it and and and, and drivetrain parts that were some bespoke but some parts bin stuff. And so, yeah, hot hatches. Every hot hatch. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, automakers do that with their performance variants. You know, it starts with a base car. They pull a bunch yep. of good stuff bmw has always done that they pull their like bigger engine or whatever and slap it in the smaller chassis i mean that started with muscle cars right when the first time yep. they slapped a, a big block into a smaller vehicle kind of a part's been special in itself right yeah see like hot hatches muscle cars everything good <laughs> the, been car, everything are, good a those Diablo, are things I like. <laughs> we've we've mentioned an f40 like everything good is a is, is a part bin parts bin car what else is what else is uh, in your parts bin wheelhouse so to speak what do you well do you let's go do? super modern man the the yeah. new nissan z is totally a parts bin yeah. car it i mean they straight up took the engine from the red sport whether it be the q50 or q60 mm -hmm. dropped it in the nissan of course it got a six-speed manual which was a big deal but 
so much of that componentry, like the chassis is still 370Z. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the door cards and door handles and everything, interior bits are still 370Z, which is, I think, hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's that's just how it goes. You know, they just they just do that. And then they modeled the, the taillights after the Z32 300ZX. So mm -hmm. not quite a parts bin part there, but close. We'll give it partial yeah. credit for that part. But pretty neat, though, that they're still doing that with a modern car. But, I mean, the 370Z was pretty solid. So... <laughs> What would you rather have, like, and I, I know when we, we talked about that car several episodes ago, mm -hmm. um, we, we, we kind of dedicated to the new Z when, the, the, when stuff was more announced and it was rolling out. Um, would you, would you rather, to, to play our, our favorite game here for a second, um, <laughs> would you rather have a, a parts bin car, like a, a absolutely no shame in-house parts bin special car, which is what that car is. Right. Or a a no shame like intra manufacturer parts been special car like the new supra where that is almost exclusively a bmw product sure um with some tweaks and stuff by the my friends and yours over at toyota um i don't know i think i'd rather have a traditional like ad hoc parts been in-house parts been special like the z like in theory yeah uh, i've never I've, i haven't actually driven a new z or a supra mm. So I, you know, I can't speak to which is the better product, and people tend to say, I, I think on paper the Super is much faster, but much faster, yeah. With that said, like I don't know, I think on in the the overarching theory is I think I'd rather have it be an in-house parts parts been special car than a, a rebadged and and reimagined something else from another manufacturer. I'm I'm with you on that one for sure, and like honestly, like in real world testing, the Super is much faster. Uh, yeah. It makes a lot of power, but like you said, it's really a BMW with a Toyota, some design elements like suspension. Yeah. I think the handling department and the body were made by Toyota. So it's, it's, you know, it's mostly BMW and mm -hmm. with that comes BMW things, which is fine. I, I mean, I don't hate BMW fine that under much. War fine under warranty, but I don't fine. buy, I don't buy a Toyota to like ditch it the moment it's about to run out of warranty. Like that's sure, no one, I buy no, that product. Yeah. Anyone driving a 30 year old Corolla agrees with that statement. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm with you. The Z is like in-house. It's tried also tried and true. The componentry, like the 370Z was sold for what, nine or 10 years, model years. Yeah. If that's true. And I mean, they, they still held out. So, I mean, it's been tested over time and improved upon. And I think that's a good sign. So I'd go with the Z. I, just, I, I mean, the heritage is there. I know the super is faster, but I, I, I personally go with the Z. Which is a shame because the Supra is like, like one of my top favorite nameplates of all time. Um, and not even like getting caught up in like the Mark four stuff, just, you know, I've had a bunch of Mark ones and Mark twos and stuff over the years. And so, um, man, I wish Toyota found a way to just like oh. do it in house. even if they just like had a, a dressed down light, like me skinned lightweight mm. LC 500. Okay. And yeah. And the new Supra was like an LC 500, but lighter and maybe more rough around the edges and more, more you know, more less buttoned up and shave $30,000 off the entry price. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what the, the, the Mark IV Supra was a, a modified it was. Toyota Soar SC 300-400 chassis. Well, you could also, right? you know, you could like... Which uh, kind of makes in... it a parts been special. Like of the course. vaunted Mark IV Supra, which, you know, is, is God's gift to man. But, <clears throat> you know, outside of, you know, a, a somewhat bespoke six-speed manual, um and brakes and, mm -hmm. and styling like a lot of that car is, is is either just straight up toyota parts bin stuff um and and the chassis is like a, it's just a shortened toyota soror chassis so yeah, it, it's it's I in and of so. itself a parts bin special yeah you could take the 500 you could put lower compression twin turbo it you know yeah. make it a little more exciting a manual trans and boom that's your new supra yeah boy just saying. All right, the Mark Six. When the Mark Six rolls out, that that'll they'll recycle <laughs> recycle the LC five hundred. Well, it's weird. Speaking of parts spins, Toyota's like uh, sports car lineups kind of shared with everyone because they got the you know the new GT eighty six is really a Subaru powered yeah, beast. Subaru. And, mm -hmm. uh, I guess the Corolla is the only really good. Yeah, one. the GR. Like, yeah, it's like their only sports car in house, other than the. Uh, and it's a Corolla. Yeah. Mm. You know, but I mean, think about. Think about all the Toyota, all the the vaunted Toyota sports cars. I know the, the first two generations of of MR2. The uh, the original MR2 is like an ultimate parts bin 
oh, special yeah, car. True. Yep. Where they got the the, the, the twin cam for it for a GE motor that was in the the Hachiroku the AE86 cars and was in some other out of out of the American market stuff. Your or even your 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 uh, Prism twin cam GSI baby. That's it. Um, so they, they 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 took that motor, they spun it around. It basically has a, a front wheel drive Corolla five speed manual. Um, they make a little two seater mid engine contraption out of it, toss it all together. I think I think it's mostly got Corolla braking components and and suspension components. Um, and voila, like one of the most memorable cars from the eighties. The Fiero was like that too. It's just. GM's not nearly good at pulling that kind of thing off. Then, Oof, as, as Toyota, yeah. you know, the AE86, that's a parts bin car. Um, yep. it, it it's I don't know, like everyone's favorite cars are parts bin cars, and I just don't think people realize it until all of a sudden it's a more expensive, you know, whatever. If, if the price point on the car is suddenly expensive, now all of a sudden it's not allowed to be a parts bin car. Sure, I mean, yeah, there's that, right? You don't want to be driving your hundred thousand plus dollar car and notice you have the same door handles as a Miata. Wait. So here well here's <laughs> the thing and I've actually I I want to I want to make a video with it with my little my little green 924 which is an extreme parts bin car the the original mm-hmm. 924. Um I think I've got an interesting take on that and let, let me know your opinion cuz it it mm-hmm. actually ties into into uh the parts binness of it. So that car it's it's a it's got a Porsche badge on it, but it was a it was a Porsche project for Audi Volkswagen. It was supposed mm-hmm. to be a Volkswagen. Long story short, they pulled the plug on it. Porsche bought the rights back to it because they needed an entry level sports car. Pushed it into production. It's got an Audi motor. Half the interior, more than half the interior is all straight up Volkswagen components. All the switch gear, yep. everything. Um, I mean, it, literally, some of the switches have a Volkswagen symbol on it like that's how unabashed part parts sharing it is and so you know and that's like the bugaboo on those cars which is partly why they have no value it's they, crazy they're just yeah. not worth anything i suspect that if it was a volkswagen the entire time like it was sold by volkswagen dealerships it had a volkswagen badge on it they would be worth triple what they're worth today Mm, interesting when and for everything else it's inverse so like if you had something generally if you have a a a car that enters production like let's say a honda s2000 if honda s2000 was a porsche product like Mm -hmm. instead of the boxer let's say the boxer never happened and instead instead they had the s2000 high revving front rear entry-level sports car 9,000 RPM redline, like in S2000s are worth money, but how much more would it be worth if it was a Porsche offering the entire time? That's a tough one. A significant, I, I, I think it would be worth more. Mm. That might be a bad example. Yeah. That's a hard one honest. to imagine. It's like, but the let's 19- go back to the first, let's go back to the first, let's go back to the first gen, uh, MR2. Okay. If that was a, like an entry level mid engine offering from Porsche, with the same specs, but just had a Porsche badge, looked all wedgy in eighties, right? Mm-hmm. They would probably be worth. They would have been worth a, a good amount of money, kind of the entire time. Sure. Those cars have finally appreciated over the last ten years. Yeah, but they, they'd be worth more today, and they would have been worth more then. They'd probably be more on the road because people would maintain them instead of treating them like a Toyota and crushing them, letting them rust into the ground. I think the inverse is true on the nine twenty four because then it would have been instead of being like the crappiest Porsche that's like a parts bin car. It would have been like the coolest, the only like the 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 most interesting uh, Volkswagen. It just doesn't. It would match. have been front engine. It would have been the only front engine rear drive Volkswagen. Yeah, which doesn't ever. match Volkswagen's catalog at all. That's my take. Is like their yeah, cars it, are it all been, very similar. Like the, it basically, it, if it existed and they if they said, "Hey, let's go through with it and let's have this car be our car," and then instead of instead of scrapping it and making the Scirocco instead, if the Scirocco never existed and they had the 924, mm. it would have been like the most interesting, like 
advanced, maybe sought after. I, I think it would be worth it would be worth at, at least double, maybe. Triple. I mean, it is interesting, and it's also like you say the Even same though it has Honda. a lower brand. Badge yeah, but it. you say the same against the Honda S2000 because all the Hondas were front wheel drive or crossovers, right? At that point, and then yeah. you come out with this lightweight rear wheel drive convertible. Mm -hmm. That's very bucking the trend, and that worked for Honda, I think, over did. overall. So I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's why I think that was probably an imperfect. Uh, but it works on my it works yeah on my part but like yeah i, I it, it's interesting it's the one it, i think it's the one car where it has the upmarket brand on it to the detriment of its value <clears throat> versus everything else it's usually the other way around it's like oh. oh you have the you know the the upmarket version of the whatever car that's the one you want that's the one that's more valuable mm. you know yeah if, if porsche made a hot hatch that probably would have it would be more valuable than the GTI, right? They do, dude. It's called the Panamera. What's up? Oh, that's true. Get that hot, <laughs> hot hybrid hatch. Um, but yeah, so like, and and the parts binness of the Porsche 924 is what that and the motor. It's fine, but it's if you look at it as compared to other stuff in period, it's not like it's way underpowered. It was kind of the same amount of power as everything oh. else good low uh, curb weight too good good chassis balance overall for a affordable car yeah, yeah i think it's a good car it's like the 914 well, like the 914 yeah. 914s were valueless for the longest time right they were yeah. nothing you could scoop a 914 running driving engine everything four grand yeah mm -hmm. not so much now not my anymore. friend not anymore but you could still get a running driving 924 for four grand Yes. And you can't I, get yeah. anything for four grand. Right. It's really hard to find off. And it's car. because it's a parts car. It's a parts bin special. It's a, it the haters are gonna hate. Yeah, it's the fear. It's the fear of Porsche maintenance cost, but you know, not knowing the actual product is what gets people, I think. <sighs> I suppose. But then I don't know, nine forty four have arguably worse maintenance and, and those <laughs> those have appreciated. So yeah, I'd stay I'd stay away from the early ones. I like the later, the later ones for sure. Yeah. Later, um, later, so here's later. A, what other what other cars you you cooking with? Another one for you, uh, a car that's often considered a huge parts bin special, but really isn't when you tear it all down. Uh, the Tesla Roadster being just a Lotus Elise, my friend. Yeah, although I, I mean, Not what the, comparable? They're what? They're worth two and a half times uh, <laughs> uh, 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 a similar Elise. How shocking is that? Um, yeah, it, 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 uh, someone broke it down, shocking. man. It's only 6% of the actual parts are shared from the Lotus. Uh, and that being said, uh, I think it's the windshield, rear view mirrors, airbags, I think some interior stuff uh, and suspension bits, but the it's body work. the steering wheel. I know the yeah, steering wheel. Yeah, the steering wheel is the exactly the same, yep. but the, the body panels are all completely manufactured by Tesla. Uh, and they tested it all together for like the air tunnel testing and everything to make sense because they did have to change the, the dimensions of the Elise to make it work with their uh, battery pack and whatnot. I just, I just, couple days ago drove one of those they're pretty cool man i drove but, one not, of, like around a parking lot because I, oh. I had it for i had it for i had it for imaging like i had it for photos um the homies over at car park had me had me image it and um, we took cool two cars because we couldn't fit couldn't fit photo gear and two humans inside it at the same time so um i had to take my uh my old man car and, and tag along so i didn't get to drive it too much just poking around the parking lot but they're cool um it is a cool car yeah they're they're cool i'm kind of glad they're getting their they're finally getting their 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 moment in the sun, you know, and they're, they're now it's a hundred thousand dollar car. It's wild. It's kind of bonkers, um, but they're cool. You Which know, is a hundred thousand dollars for one by any stretch, but yeah, if I was going to spend that much for something that started as a Lotus Elise, I'd get like a Hennessy Venom, like one of those Elises that has yeah. like a thousand horsepower. Yeah, or just like <laughs> three Elises. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Elise <laughs> by itself is a great car. Uh, yeah. Talk about cars that have not changed in value forever. It's been like 30 to 35K for an Elise for, I don't know, like a decade at yeah. least. Oh, yeah. And it will <laughs> always be that much. And, you know, that's the thing, though. Those cars are completely bespoke. Like the whole, the engine is not pulled from anything else. The transmission, no, that's not a part right. of the special Elise. <laughs> no way. Right? They would never do that. Yeah, no. They wouldn't do that with a Navora either, right? Yeah. Or really every single... I mean, yeah, even, yeah, those cars, almost every Lotus is basically a kit car. But, serious uh, question. Serious question, though. You think yeah. uh, Lotus borrowing everybody's engines, you think they paid their debt back by handing out those handling by Lotus badges back in the day? That'd be sweet to have <laughs> if you have an Elise and just have a no. <laughs> powered by Toyota, like the same script and color and everything, just put it on the fender. That's a smart idea, dude. I like that one. Yeah. 
I thought you were going to say put the handling by Lotus on the Lotus. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but yeah, it's fun. I wonder how many wonder how many cars um Lotus actually did the handling on. So many. Like uh I know they did a lot of Toyota stuff. I know they did Yeah, I know a the Mark II of... Supra suspension was completely designed by yeah. the semi trailing arm rear suspension is completely Lotus. All the Asus but stuff yes. we already know, like the Impulse stylus. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, dude, that's it's those badges are so freaking cool. As yeah. far as cool badges go, handling by Lotus has got to be up there. I just want that on a shirt, just that badge on a shirt. Handling by Lotus. Yes. Heck yeah. Brilliant. The um, yeah, and so I don't know, like what other? I mean, I, I feel like like Elise. I don't even think about Elise as like a part of the car, but it's yeah. I mean, oh. sure. Um, I I feel like we could just go forever. You can. I think you really can. If you really start to dig in, I mean, we're not counting like badge engineering. We're not counting like yeah. just shared parts between similar cars, but uh, it's cool how you really break down, especially the more special a car is, they te tend to pull more parts from other vehicles, which is what I'm finding as I dig in. It's a, an honorable mention. I put the 90s Impala SS because there was nothing yeah. else like that in the lineup at the time. And it was really, they took like a Caprice and made the body work as a coupe, which is kind of cool that they did that. Cause like, honestly, that's a hard sale in the mid nineties, right? Let's come up with a, like a two dollar huge, like yeah. kind of like a muscle car of the nineties. Right. And it Conf had like confession. Yeah. I, I kind of never liked those cars, dude. There's something about, so when I was, back I mean, they're, they're, they're sinister, but mm. Back in my army days, when we had pieces right. of crap that we used to like race around, and think we were cool, um, with totally expendable budgets, right? Of course, my buddy scored one of those and he got the purplish color one. I yeah, it's gonna get corrected for not using the right pay code, but that damn thing was so cool like standing, like stand on the brakes, melt the tires. They were all autos, unfortunately, but that was such a cool car. He had a you know, it's an LT1 Corvette engine, right? Talk about parts 200, 260 horsepower, right? Is that right? Re yeah, rear wheel drive when just about yeah. everything at, at that time was definitely front wheel drive already, right? Everything that was the popular move, way cheaper to make a front wheel drive car. Uh, suspension, I think, in that car, you could get the police suspension i forget the code for that and he had all that yeah, it was like 9c1 code. or something it was yeah. it was so cool it was a cool car and i agree like i see the caprices or i see the really bad modded impala ss's and i'm with you it looks atrocious but there's something about like a good like wide tire one that just it does look ominous i mean lord vader your car has I just, arrived i just don't really like the way they drive i mean they have a little bit of punch but it's like a drag car man in, in my head it just drives like a taxi i don't know mm. cams uh, Cams and some like exhaust work, and you're already making cams. huge horsepower. Yeah, cams, just, cams, cams, baby. Cams, cams, cams. If you're driving a stock muscle car, get the Camp fuck girl. out. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know. I just those cars have never, never done it for me. I, I think know. it's cool. I'm glad I, Chevy I, made something. Although, like that. however, I always thought the Mercury Marauder was cool, and it's kind of the same thing. I mean, literally, they're not, a but it's, crown it's the same formula. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. This is the same formula. <laughs> uh, but for some reason, the Marauders were cool, and then the, I don't know. Was it the know. leather jacket you got when you bought one new? Ooh, those are cool though. Oh, they're so cool. The the the, the, the Marauder, like the 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 Mercury head oh, logo. This guy fucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mercury, Mercury does work. Um, <laughs> Mercury does work, Mercury. The oh boy. I mean, just I don't know. I feel like we can sit here and go forever, which we shouldn't. But um, <laughs> we should not. We absolutely should not. In our eleventh hour of our episode. Yes. Um, but but cool. I don't, a good I, shout who, out. Who would you who would you want? I don't know. Like, who do you think could pull off like another parts bin car? Like, if you were to like Frankenstein some cars together, that was hard because everyone just has EVs and crossovers. But like, yeah, you know, I just I think there's some somebody could make something. I, you know, Toyota Toyota made the GR Yaris. Um, it's a good one. Could Honda? I I you know could Honda do something? Could they could they make an, a new S two thousand with the the CTR drivetrain. You're you know, going to have that four cylinder. You're going to have that question answered pretty soon, I think, right? Aren't they working on one? Hey, sure. Rumor mill spinning, my friend. I know, I know. Yeah. And, 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 and the next Half Life game is going to come out here in a minute. And like, you want to talk, you, you use this phrase a lot, clutching your pearls. No one's clutching their pearls more than S2000 owners waiting for how Honda fucks up their beloved namesake. <laughs> right. Should it's, they keep it S2000 or should they go like S3000 or S? I, Originally, it was the displacement of the engine, right? They never called right. it the S twenty two hundred. So they did, yeah. So the the trend has been been bucked with. 
Um, yeah, I mean the well, the Civic's a two liter, so they could do an S two thousand with that motor in it. They could that, that thing called the S two thousand T because it's turbocharged? Oh shit, mm-hmm. that would be cool. That thing it's would just, rip. But the, the problem is the convertibles are dead. Nobody buys convertibles anymore. Says Which is uh, a shame, except for Miata enthusiasts. Yeah, I mean, I haven't looked at production numbers. I I assume though, Miata production numbers has been like steady. Like it was probably peaked in like ninety five, and then it dipped in like. 2001 and it's probably been steady state at whatever that number is probably since i think the, the nd a little dip in like 08 09 because the world was melting and then <laughs> well the nd brought back some some fans right because it was yeah. such a nice redesign back to back to basics added and then the 2019 iteration where they added the extra horsepower mm-hmm. and made it genuinely like an s2000 performance wise so sure yeah i don't know i don't know i'd like to see it back i'd like to see i'd like to see a new s2000 I'm but on the just fence. parts bin, but just parts bin it, man. Just yeah, parts bin, baby. Here's how they kill it: automatic only, <laughs> all-wheel yeah, drive right. hybrid. Yeah, CVT. <laughs> but I mean, they could do. Um, I like you know what would be cool: a parts bin Volvo P1800, P1800 ES. So I'll have it be a shooting brake. Um, the C30, and... baby. That's what that was, right? A yeah, re- a reimagining. Yeah, yeah it's a, an homage. <laughs> Um, but you know, and they would just put that weird, like hybrid supercharged turbocharged four cylinder that they have in that engine. Um, oh yeah. I mean, just don't talk about not owning something out of a warranty period, but dude, I don't want to work on that thing. What does a vacuum leak look like on that engine? Uh, there's (laughs) just, it probably doesn't even use vacuum for anything. It's just like this magical mashup, (laughs) this unholy union of like every possible power source. Swedish meatballs. (laughs) Yeah. Just. Oh boy. Take it apart well, with an Allen key. Yeah. So shout out to Partsman Specials. I think yeah, we love you. We love you. Yeah, don't let anyone don't let anyone tell you that you are uh inferior <laughs> to uh to other vehicles. I mean You're, wait, would you say they're more than the sum of their parts? I I oh. would. I would say that. <laughs> Concern it. I agree. Um oh on that note. Ooh. Should we should should we get quizzical? I think we are. Let's Let me pull up a quizzical, delicious ad for quizzical. you, Frank, as you explain the game to our, our wonderful five viewers that are in attendance tonight. Um, yeah, so this game, if you are uh, not uh, up to speed with it, uh, is, is a game where Chadwick here is going to find a, uh, a, a print ad from some sort of a magazine, usually, uh, from the 80s, 90s, up to the mid-2000s. He's going to read the type copy from this ad. Um, it will then be incumbent upon me to try and figure out, based upon just the type copy with the identifying details redacted out, it's going to be upon me to figure out what make, model, uh, etc. cetera, uh, that we're talking about here. That is the subject of this ad. I get three guesses and 10 minutes. If I guess and I get it wrong, I can ask for a hint. Um, and that's that's kind of all you need to know feel free to uh play along at home get a pen and paper uh if you went uh or uh and that's a thing that you would use um a mm. long time ago um made from uh, a mash uh <laughs> tree material <laughs> paper uh and dried and, and bleached uh, and then a pen uh, uh, so they used to be um made leaded feathers and stuff oh, oh cool quill pen uh, yeah yeah quill quill <laughs> Um, and now, now they don't exist. Um, but yes, play along at home. Chadwick, are you, are you geared up? I'm ready, buddy. Okay. Fire this away. Is, I've got this, my listening ears on. This should be a pretty good one. I'll start the 10 minutes when I finish the ad, yeah. uh, top. So we have the vehicle in the center of the ad, our favorite driver's three quarter shot front wheels, probably turned at about a 32 degree angle. Mm. Uh, at the beginning, at, at the beginning of the ad at the top, there's a subsection that says, this is why you took driver's ed. And it shows a black and white photo of a kid looks like they're in the forties, fifties with a, one of those drivable metal cars. Oh, a pedal so, car. Okay. Kind of neat. The ad reads as follows. High revving, 120 horsepower, fuel injected engine. Hey, this car is for driving, not just looking at. Ooh. Don't just look at it, eat it. Oh American boy, cycle there. it's not going to eat itself. <laughs> Five speed transmission and tubular rear axle with spring over shock sports suspension and progressive ride tuning. Is this a real set of wheels or what? Uh, that's not my funny commentary. That's actually in the ad. 
dual airbags and anti-lock brakes two things you don't need until you really need them and then always wear your safety belts even with airbags it's a good life lesson yeah am fm stereo radio standard heck yeah what's driving <laughs> without a little driving music this ad is so good dude your choice <laughs> of a great looking this part's important great looking coupe shown okay sporty four-door sedan not shown. I love how they did that. Or a hot new convertible. Hey, we told you. Yeah, this was a cool yeah. car. This is so good. Fold down rear seats means you can go places and take lots of stuff with you. A huge glove box. Oh. <laughs> Some glove boxes are merely mouse sized. This one holds a whole laptop computer. Oh boy. Okay. Those Dingle were in existence. <laughs> Dingle, excuse dingle, me. Oh. dingle, dingleberry monitoring, uh, single key locking, one key locks and unlocks doors, trunk, and all the fun of blank. Daytime running lamps, they're a safety feature, but they look good too. Ooh. And the final tagline at the bottom finally, a real set of wheels you can really afford. Oh boy, Frank! That's why did you take? Why did you take drivers' ed? You have ten minutes to figure out why. Ten on the clock, baby. <sighs> boy. Um. Okay, so it comes in two door, four door, convertible. Mm. It said a tubular rear axle. Did I did I hear that? Five speed transmission and tubular <laughs> rear axle. So it doesn't say that this axle is a driving axle, right? It just it, says it's an. It, it could be like a dead axle. It doesn't say. It doesn't it say could, in the like end. A tubular beam axle. So I don't. I don't. Mm. It's almost like it's selling me a rear wheel drive, but it didn't. It doesn't actually say that. It doesn't say where it drives now. Okay. Um. Hundred and twenty horsepower of quote unquote high revving. Yes. Which I don't know if I believe. On the high revving, I mean, high revving mm. could be fifty four hundred for all I know. I don't know. Um, this is this has to be mid nineties or newer, just based upon dual airbags, um, the existence of a laptop that would actually be able to fit in a in a glove box, perhaps. Um, it did say it was huge, <laughs> huge. Yeah, I thought it was saying instead of mice, it holds rats. Yeah. So. <laughs> You know, I, my could this be? I, it's not gonna. Oh boy, I I don't think this is a BMW product. Um, they wouldn't be touting the 120 horsepower version, which would be like a like a 318. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think. Um, and they don't have like a tubular rear axle. It's an independent act. I, I want to say this, this just the way that that part of it was worded it makes me feel like this is a it's like a just a dead a, a, a beam dead axle rear front end front drive car 120 horsepower and the fact that it's you know how much can you afford and da, 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 da. sure um i'm thinking i'm i'm gonna take a stab here even though i think it was available with a with a, a hotter motor although maybe not anymore at this point i'm gonna say this is a 1990 seven Chevrolet Cavalier because oh. you can get that in a four door you can get it in a two door shown um, you can get it in a convertible you can also do that with its its stable mate the Pontiac Sunfire and I might actually I think I'm you know what I'm I think I'm gonna I'm I think I'm gonna build some driving excitement here and I think I'm gonna go the Pontiac Sunfire, just because it seems a little the, the type copy seems a little spicier. Um, and you know, not that anyone would be using a laptop in their Sunfire in the 90s because one one costs the same as the other. So, um, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say there's a 1997 Pontiac Sunfire final answer, Bob. Finally, a real set of wheels you can really afford Pontiac Sunfire. <laughs> We are driving <laughs> excitement. Ooh, okay. Good job, man. I had to do this one. Do we know the year? Did I hit it 97? It's 95, my oh, friend. Oh, I almost said 96. So, 
Yeah, yeah, that was the first year of the Sunfire. And yeah, later you did get a Sunfire GT with quite a bit more power out of that that updated four. four cylinder. They had an Ecotech at one point. Uh, I think the they last did. of them had had more horsepower. The Ecotech was kind of like the reimagining of the Quad Four, if you will. Yeah. But uh, what a cool car! I think this was worth like bringing out because yeah, it was it was the spicy Cavalier. So uh, and the autos on that. those, I believe, were three speeds. I think there were it was a three speed. Like yeah, non overdrive auto. It wasn't pretty, um, um, but the five speed was the way to go. And yeah, convertible. I I would totally dig on one of these first gen Sunfires with a convertible ma- and manual combination. Yes, but no. Like I get it. Like the <laughs> like I, I, the guy that used to own the convertible Geo Metro in me, um, would 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 agree with you there. But God, those were piles of garbage. Those were just <sighs> relentlessly terrible. They weren't like, that. I would take this in a Cavalier. I'd have, it over a Cavalier. I'd have it over a Cavalier for sure. I would take a Cavalier of this vintage over a modern cruise. Um, the cruise transmissions go out every twenty thousand miles, my friend. Everything else in that Cavalier goes out every every twenty thousand. Yeah. as an owner of a ninety-two Cavalier, which followed up the act of my nineteen ninety Chevy Corsica. Yes, that Cavalier was a beast. It had like that one had 150. Was it the C24 package or whatever? I couldn't swing that kind of cash back then, oh, yeah. dude. With that weird, <laughs> with that those weird like um, like graphing paper like wheel covers, like the waffle the waffle grid wheel covers. Those were the shit. And then some cars had that as like the gauge cluster background too, the grid paper background. Yes, yeah, like the thin red lines. Well done, sir. Should we do some uh, PCP to celebrate? That is Project Car Progress. We should, we sh- you know what we we should, um, I guess I'll just go. I don't I have not made. You can tell by the the my <laughs> collection of garbage in, instead of progress in my garage in the background. I have not gotten a whole lot done. Um, I have spent more time with the Lexus. Oh, um, so when I got it, it had one key, and it's not. It's it's like a valet key. Okay, so. It won't let you do any of the key, like it has buttons on it, mm. but it won't let you do any of the like cool walk, like the walk up and you touch the handle and it automatically unlocks and you push the button and it automatically unlocks. Gotcha. And you have to put the key in the thing. You can't just like turn the little nub in. Uh, and you also can't pop the trunk. You have to use the actual physical popper on the oh. inside. You can't just like go up and use the button on the outside and have it power open and power close. Like none of that's allowed. Unless you have the master key. Well, the master key. Um, Cha-ching? Yeah, it was like to get it from the local dealership, they wanted like 300 bucks for the key. Oof. And then they want two hours, at $235 an hour of labor to program it. So, it, yeah, so it would have been like an eight plus hundred dollar affair. Holy shit. Um, but I found. The I, I I found one for sale from a Lexus dealership on eBay. So there was like a, a whatever it is. It's like Bob Smith's House of Pancakes and Lexuses. Oh, that's a good in, combo in Texas. Um, and it's just whatever their dealership was and their parts department. I guess to make some extra coin was just selling hawking parts on <clears throat> eBay Motors. And I got it for it was like delivered. It was like one hundred and fifteen dollars for the key. Just do the programming yeah. yourself, right? You have to have so it's a weird deal. So on on this, the key is it's a two year only key for oh five and oh six. Oh, damn it! <laughs> and it was like this weird interim of like a smart key, like a really really like more modern smart key, and just the standard like boop boop like keyless fob. Sure. Yeah. And so it's like a weird crossover. And so the programming on it is kind of a pain in the junk. But I did find a guy, like, you have to have a specific scanner to be able to plug into the OBD2 system to be able to do it. And I don't have this $12,000 scanner. But I did find a guy that said, like, hey, if you can get an OEM key, I can program it. So I got the key, and then I called the guy. He's like, oh, I'm on vacation until, like, the 25th. I'm like, tight. So I got to wait for him to come back, and he's going to charge me $150 flat to do it. Um, good savings so i'll be yeah instead of it costing me like 800 plus dollars um it's gonna be whatever a third that nice nice nice. so i've got that and then i found i and and i've subsequently found the for whatever reason the telescopic steering wheel goes up and down okay it's all the way in the forward most position 
like towards the dash, not towards oh, the driver. Gotcha. Which is actually okay. Like it's it's fine. Um, but if I hit the the adjustment to have it telescope towards me, it just goes beep. It makes like a little squeak noise and it doesn't move. Um, I I found out apparently that the dealership can disable that for some reason. Like if you're like, oh, I don't. I don't want it to, you know, come at me and crush me because I'm a million years old or whatever. They can like disable it or something. Interesting. And a 97 year old dude uh, was the prior owner, so maybe that happened. I don't know. Maybe. Um, but you Weird. need said fancy pants scanner to be in the. You have to like recalibrate it or something. Come. So I, I might be up against that, but otherwise, it's been. I've put like 1,200 miles on it already, um, and it's great. The, the, the fuel economy kind of sucks. Yeah, and it, and it big is thirsty big. V8. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting like 18 and a half. It's not bad. If I do pure freeway, I can probably get like 25. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. The problem is I'm I'm not doing pure freeway. I'm like getting the kid to school and back and blah, 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 blah. so it it kind of is killing me. True. And part of me is like, man, if I'm gonna get 18 miles a gallon, like, why don't I just get something that's like kind of badass, um, and gets 18 miles a gallon? You know, like, I don't know. Nice. I it's a very good car. It is comfortable. Um, it's very good at what it does. Um, I, hmm. I'll have to reevaluate in a couple of months and figure out if I am truly like luxury car guy. Yeah. So we'll see because it's it's a great it's great cool. at what it does. I just it's big, and it's cush and which is, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, and you won't have to be fixing stuff every month because it's a Lexus. So let that sink yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. It it will go forever. Like I won't have to do anything with it. It'll just. You know, eventually I'll have to do a timing belt. Eventually I'll have to do tires and brakes. Yep, and yep. That's it. And then it's that's the end of it. But I don't know. Like it's it's very huh. good, but there's a lot. Like it's it's mundane and it's relatively boring. It's like hyper competent. Um, good. Usually that makes a good daily, my friend. And yeah, and if I can keep it, like it 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 will give a eulogy at my funeral. Like that's how <laughs> long it will last. Like it will. Facts. Yeah. It, yeah. And so I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. The jury's still out. Until then, I'm just packing miles on it in comfort. But I don't know. I don't know how long I want to be comfortable for. We shall see. Let me uh, let me hit this PCP real quick. We're up against the clock here. So, yeah. um, so spark plugs uh, on the 300ZX. I decided to do that because I found uh, the previous owner replaced the coil packs. He gave me the old boxes, put the original coil packs, and I love it when people do that. He also gave me the old spark plug boxes, and I noticed they were for a temperature setting that was actually hotter. So more times than not, you see people put colder plugs in to compensate for performance mods. This is a stock car, so you shouldn't do that anyway. If you do run colder plugs, they tend to foul really quick. Right. Uh, so he ran a hotter plug, which I think might have been a genuine mistake. And you have to be careful because hotter means pre-detonation. You can get misfires by running the wrong spark plug. So I'm like, damn it, I need to replace these spark plugs. Actually, not that bad. Everything's 12 millimeter bolts to pull out the coils. However, oh. there is this like uh, balance tube that goes from each side of the intake. Uh, and kind of, sure. I, I think it has to do something with balancing the airflow. Uh, and you, when you replace that bar, there's three O-rigs you need to replace. So that's just part of doing spark plugs on that car. Uh, they're platinum, so they should last a while. I did that job, uh, nice. installed new pads, rotors, brake fluid on the Cooper S. Uh, so that was a good job. That car is very zippy, needs to have good responsive brakes. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, non-working on cars, I went to that uh, Tracy Nissan Cars and Coffee event this past weekend. And Sweet. it was super cool, dude. There were so many Z cars, uh, GTRs, like Datsuns. There was like a LS swap Datsun with like at least a 200 shot of NOS. And the dude Sweet. ripped it coming out of the dealership. <laughs> and he was like faster than all the ZR1 Corvettes and all the other wild stuff that was showing up too. So that was cool to see that. Um, but my 300 ZX was kind of like a little showcase car, which is Hell yeah. awesome. I'm super happy that like, like that car is getting around pretty good. So I'm enjoying driving it. So, yep. Work, work, work on these cars when I can, whenever I can get a few minutes, I, I turn the wrenches as best I can. So, hell yeah. Let's wrap this up, man. Every time. Uh, yeah. So, um, thanks everyone. Thanks mm. for continuing to put up with our nonsense. This is another pointless automotive podcast. Um, that's also the name of the podcast. Hey. And, uh, if you, uh, want to continue, uh checking us out it would be much appreciated tell your friends uh do all the review things on the, however mm. you choose to listen 
to your podcasts. Um, and then check out our Instagram. That's at APA Podcast on the gram. We rarely post, um, but uh, you know, maybe uh, go and mock us there and, and leave terrible comments, and that will that will force our hand to port, post more uh, and feel per, per, participatory in that part of what we do. Oh, and we're on YouTube. Find yeah. us on YouTube. If you're not watching uh, the the horrible faces we make and our, our general level of unkemptness, uh, <laughs> then please uh, check that out and, and hit us up on YouTube for that. Chadwick, where can, where can the masses find you specifically? Specifically, Auto Obsessive Garage on YouTube. You can find my car rescues, restorations, and reviews. Also on Instagram. And Frank, where they, can they follow you? I am the Photographer's Garage. Mostly on Instagram, a little bit on the YouTube um and that's nice. that's that, that, otherwise find me here yeah thanks Damn again it. yeah as always guys thanks for joining in and we will catch yeah. you on the next one let's do it take Goodbye. care Bye.